Okay, Keith here from Beat the Casino. We want to talk to you about the second part of the uh, how to become a professional Baccarat player. Um, part two, so to speak. And uh, we're logged in here to the strategic Baccarat interface. And of course, after you've got your the expectations, you have the plan of how much you uh, you want to win at first, and you know how do you go about that? You kind of, we kind of tempered your expectations at first and gave you kind of the over high level plan of uh, how to go about it. The next thing that you need to get started, of course, is strategy. Uh, you know how do you play the game, uh, whatnot. Um, of course, the first thing that you noticed about baccarat is that it's it's a real simple game. You the only decision you have to make is what side do you want to bet and how much do you want to bet um, as indicated here by and if you've played you've seen the traditional um, vertical scorecard here um, and then uh, the one that uh, uses a count uh, and which side won here too so it's a real simple game it's either going to be a banker or a player is going to win and ties aren't indicated in this uh, this shoe here or a lot of them that I'm going to show you. So uh, know that first. So, you know, you can look at the game, first of all, from a strategy standpoint. And th there are lots of ways. And you need to understand all of them, actually, um, to go ahead and become successful at it. Um, however, I want to point out the key difference. OK, and I want to do that right up front. When you buy an, a system, or an approach you're taking that system and you're walking into the game and you're going okay i'm going to take this system i'm going to go play it against whatever i happen to walk in against that's the wrong way to do it you, you won't be successful doing that what you will be successful at is if you understand all the ways to play and then you take that information and while you're in the game you develop the strategy that will beat the game. And that we call strategic Baccarat or follow the shoe. So <clears throat> to start off, so, so you must understand that concept. You, you can't go plug, you're doing it wrong if you're thinking that you can take an approach and walk into a casino and plug it into every game and win. It, it won't happen. You have to be in the game and understand what's going in the game. Now, there, there are a lot of things that we can talk about, but I'm going to give you the high level first. Okay, okay. first of all, if you're familiar enough with the game, and you probably should be if you're watching this video, that you know that only banker or player can win, or you can have a tie. Okay, we'll ignore ties for now. Um, the other way you can, so you can look at the game. Some approaches simply say, okay, go bet banker, or go always bet player. And they use certain variables to determine which one you should bet. And, and that's okay. There are games that that will work in. Now, you can also look at the game from what's called an opposite or a repeat strategy. And, and in other words, this would be a banker or a player uh, repeat, and this is an opposite. That's this is an opposite. This is an opposite. This is an opposite, opposite, I'm sorry. And then these are repeats on player. So if the same side wins again, that's a repeat. If it goes to the other side, that's called an opposite. And you can count how many opposites there are in comparison to how many repeats. Exactly the same as you can count how many player wins there are to banker. So in other words, if you look up here, player won in this shoe that they marked 54 hands, 30 players and 24 banks. So one of them won. Player, if you would have always played on player and flat bet it, you would have won about six chips. The other thing, as I talked about, that's called the player disparity, player banker disparity, is the opposite repeat disparity. So you can put a count on opposites and repeats and decide which one is ahead. Now, let me digress a little bit. Here's, here's a graphical representation of banker player disparity in our interface. And you can see here at hand five, the banker has won two hands and player has won three, and the player continued to win more and more hands, creating a, 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 a bigger disparity, and then kind of came back down, but then kind of hung about the same the whole way out, okay? The opposite to repeat disparity can be tracked also. Hand one, there was one repeat. Hand two, 
one repeat, one opposite. Okay, two opposites, one repeat. Three opposites, one repeat. Four opposites, one repeat. Four opposites, two repeats. Four opposite, three repeats. Here they were equal, four and four. Then the disparity went again. Okay, so those are those are truly the two basic events, so to speak, that you can track. Banker player wins or opposites or repeats. Now, some folks get into card depletion and card order and things like that, and they'll sell you those strategies. And all those things are good to know. Okay, we, we have them all, by the way. Um, but we have found that of, of those, the, the two to track at the core, now there's a lot more to these, but the two to track at the core are opposites and repeats and banker and player disparity. Okay, now there are subsets of those that I'm gonna tell you a little bit about. You can also, once tra uh, tracking player and banker results, okay, you can track one in a rows, two in a rows, three in a rows, four in a rows. Now, the thing is, is when, when this occurs, this two players here, when you're at this point here, you haven't seen this third hand yet. You don't know what this is. This could be a two, it could be a three, it could be a four. You don't know an event until it goes opposite. So this is called a confirmed two in a row. And a lot of folks, a lot of, a lot of um, systems will have you playing things like that. Like if you look at this game, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two in a row. So if you would have gotten to this point and bet opposite every time, here you would have lost, here you would have won, 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 and here you would have won. So, so there are systems that use patterns and, and, and say whatever's ahead stays ahead. And that's a good way uh, to play Baccarat sometimes. Whatever's ahead stays ahead. So we break Baccarat down into patterns, into cards, and into events, and into various statistics within those things, okay? Counts of opposites and repeats. Um, counts of players and bankers. Now, there's a lot of discussion, okay? When, when you play the long term, or when mathematicians talk about, and, and some statisticians talk about the long term, they say that eventually it's gonna uh, be random and within the realm of normalcy, with a certain variation, if you look at a million hands, everything will be very close to uh, about where it should be, give or take um, a little bit. And that's true. However, we're not playing a million hands. And I think it's important, I don't think people quite get their head wrapped around that sometimes. Like if I were to go in and say, I'm gonna, out of those million hands, I'm gonna grab 72 or 54 in this case. Very seldom will I grab in, in 54, let's say, very unlikely will 27 be players and 27 be bankers and 27 be opposites and 27 repeats down the middle like that. Very seldom will that happen, okay? Whereas the, the opposite will generally happen. It, there will be numbers away from zero. Now, there is a certain realm of normalcy, but a lot of times in Baccarat, what people have discovered, there isn't, okay? Now, if we talk about disparity, okay, just from a basic point of view, a lot of players play player-banker disparity. And that's what I wanna talk about first. That's probably the easiest one to identify, isn't it? When there's a player banker disparity, as there's, there is in this one, best ways to play is to follow the shoe with banker player disparity, okay? So you're gonna bet when you're playing banker disparity or banker player disparity, whichever one is ahead will continue to stay ahead. Now that probably runs uh, 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 contradictory to uh, what a lot of mathematicians say is that you should bet it's going to come back and normalize. Well, it will over a million hands, but not necessarily in this game. And that's what we see about Baccarat is that this disparity in the game usually stays. Now, as I said, that's an easy one. But now, as, as, you, as you identify that banker player disparity sometimes other disparities are a little harder to see you can call it a trend a bias and sometimes trends and bias happen within the realm of normalcy as a matter of fact in Baccarat most times they do however 
those, this player banker disparity is easy to see. The opposite repeat disparity sometimes is not as easy to see. The OT, which is another statistic that we track, is not as easy to see. However, there are disparities in those, okay? And, and, and that's, that's the key to your strategy that you must develop. You must be able to identify these other disparities and be able to adjust to the game you're in, not take a system and go and plug it in over top of this game and go, okay, I'm always gonna play this, okay? You must be able to look at all these disparities and decide what's the best, best way to play. And look, we talk certainly a lot about the traditional ones, like, like I was showing you here, you see these patterns of twos. Some people call these second liners, how they tend to clump up, so to speak, like here, 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 and here. So one, two, three, four times the second liners were attached. One, two, three, four times they were not. Well, we have to skip the first one, okay? So a lot of folks look at things like that. And, and you can use all those approaches that everyone talks about a lot, but you need to know when via the statistics of opposite repeats, um, you know, some card flow analysis, when those statistics are valid, like I say. So you, you have to be able to identify what is going on in this shoe to play the follow the shoe strategy. And we have a lot of ways to do that. And, and this, this here, when you look at this interface, this gives you a clue as to what to do. So when you play a, just a simple system, you go in and, and, and you talk about it, or, so, or you buy it or whatever, and they, what do they do to make things seem better or more complex, okay? Well, they give you an approach, and they say, go play this, and you'll, you'll always win, which usually isn't the case. And then what do they do? They put a stop loss on it. They say, but if you lose, don't go past this point. So instead of using your chips and losses as a way to decide, as a way to stop losing, we're going to use your mind, information, and statistics to tell you what to play or to change approaches. That doesn't that make more sense? That that's what being a professional is, is going in there and knowing these statistics are telling me that this approach is not going to work any further in this game. I need to change rather than saying I'm going to play this until I lose 10 chips. That's kind of dumb, okay, to be quite honest with you. You're going to play this until it's no longer a viable st strategy, until the statistics in the game tell you to do something else. And that's how you become a professional. Okay. Now, I want you to do one thing for me here while you're going through this. Remember, we talked about in the first video, I said, I want you to go and first of all, decide you're going to go to the casino and just learn how to win. Okay, so to start this process, I'm going to tell you to go try this approach. And this is part of the follow the shoe strategy. But it's a very simple part of it. It's the simplest one. Now, you got to understand is you can't sit down in any game. That That's, the, you know, this is the downside of it, okay? That we're trying to take a system and plug it into a game. However, to do that, you must have, and this is the easiest one to do like that, though, is you must qualify the game. So you can't walk up to any table and start doing this. You must qualify the game first, okay? And that's the difference. But it'll get you started down the follow the shoe path. And, you know, hopefully... Uh, you know, you, you'll take the time to join our club and get it all so that you can just simply sit down at a game. But anyway, that aside, walk up to a table and any time you see, say, a shoe like at hand eight or nine, ten, and a side is ahead by more than three, I want you to flat bet that side and bet it's going to stay ahead and continue to bet it until you get the plus three. Okay? Okay. So, in other words, you'd walk up here and let's see here at hand eight. Okay, so here at hand eight, the player is one, one, two, three, four, five, six times, and the banker's only won two times, both of them one in a row. So you're going to walk up to hand nine and you're going to bet player. And then you're going to bet player again, player again, 
and play her again. Now, at that point, you would have been at plus four, which would have been the stop, stop win, okay? But however, let me just show you, if you would have continued um, to continue to bet what's ahead will stay ahead, you could have bet this one and you'd have lost. So now you're at plus three, plus two, right? Plus three, plus two, plus one, back to zero. Plus one, plus two, back to zero. Plus two, plus one, plus three, plus two, okay? Plus three, plus four, plus five, plus six, plus five, plus six, plus seven. You could have even made it through this streak and got up and broke even uh, back to where you were here, okay? So the point is you're going to go up to the game, qualify it, okay? And again, the most important thing is if, if you would have bet player uh, starting at the beginning, you'd have won six more. But at this point right here at hand five, you, you had no reason to. You'd simply be guessing. But now after this happened, and, you know, I'll give you another qualifier. Banker didn't go any more than a one in a row, okay? Uh, and, of course, if we would saw the cards, too, that would have been another indicator. In this case, we don't. But you see what I'm saying? You're going to bet what's ahead. Taking this simple statistic and betting what's ahead will stay ahead. Any, whatever side has plus three wins or more, you're going to bet it's going to go go further. And when you get the plus three, you're going to stop. Whether you bet 10, 25, 100, whatever it is. But you must qualify the game. Remember that. You don't know the complete follow the shoe strategy. Remember what I said, okay? You can't take a system and go plug it in. You know, it's. but the easiest one to do that with is with player banker disparity approach, okay? You can you can kind of look at the scoreboard and, and, and get a feel. Okay? Now, it won't win every time. But I bet you you win a couple chips trying this. Okay, so that's one of the one of the key strategies of follow the shoe is how to identify player banker strategies, uh, player banker disparity. There are more statistics and more events that we look for, but that is the basis of it. And I want you to give that a try. Okay, you want to learn the rest of the player banker disparity and how to do it, how to pick it off, and and when to change sides. You know, come on over to the to our club. We have a lot of professionals. Uh, who do this full time. So come on over, talk to us at beatthecasino.com and we'll teach you all the ways to play the game. All right, this is Keith from Beat the Casino. Thanks for taking the time and watching our videos.